Alastair and Tracy Ormond and their son Daniel farm sheep and beef at Hatuma in Central Hawke's Bay. The Ormonds won the Supreme Award for the East Coast Balance Farm Environment Awards in 2015. 620 hectares is Te Amapua. It's quite a steep property, sheep and beef, and it's sort of limestone, it's got a lot of different soil types. It's quite a difficult property to run in that it's got little fingers of good land. So the little fingers are what we develop. The strengths of this farm are that it's got superb water. Uh, we've got a lot of natural water being limestone country and we've got a community water scheme on the country which is free draining and doesn't hold water. That's definitely one of the strengths. Another strength is our location here, our height, gives us a rainfall average of about 12, 1300 millimetres. We still are prone to droughts and bad droughts, but at the moment we've got feed coming out our ears. Some of the weaknesses can be strengths as well. The weaknesses are contour, so our susceptibility to erosion. The fact that we've got a little creek running right through the property is going to impose challenges for us in the future. The property has been in my family for three generations, but I'm the first person in our family to live on it. I came to this property in 1978. We've done a lot of development. There were virtually no trees here. There were a couple of shoulder belts and the two hectares of gums, and that was about it. Our house site was a bare paddock, and none of the other trees were there, so we've done all of the planting. Really. I was brought up with a love of trees and birds and, and that sort of thing. But first of all, you survive, then you thrive, then you sustain. And the sustainability thing is really uh, coincidental. We happen to have done some things which, when people look back on it now, they say they were good. But it wasn't at the forefront of our thinking as it is now. The farm planting is basically in three parts. There's pine planting, then there's native planting, then there's regeneration. So the pine plantings, we planted on steep slopes for shearing shelter and possible production stuff, and we've got 33 hectares of that. And then the native planting basically started at our house site. That was a bare paddock. We planted it in tree lucerne as a cover crop, and then we introduced natives. And then out on the farm, that's a more recent thing with natives, and that's part of this riparian planting that is around us here. And that's our effort to start retiring the waterways which is difficult on this country. A lot of this waterway is less than the required scale that needs fencing, but we're trying to do it anyway. We're planting a variety of natives, and we now use little protectors around those plantings. And the third aspect of our planting, if you like, is in this native block here. We have a big debate as to what we introduce into that. That's basically fencing and pest control and allowing that to regenerate, and that doesn't require intervention from us. The environmental awards given us an increase in awareness, I guess, in what people are after. We had never entered any award prior to this, um, and we're very much a family-orientated farm, and so our development was for our family and for future generations, and uh, as I said, it's coincidental that it happened to coincide with environmental codes of conduct. Now that we're more, more environmentally aware, we are shaping things and doing things slightly differently. Succession's a big thing for us. I'm 63 years old now. I first wrote a written succession plan age 52 because I have five children. Uh, Tracy has two. My five children are four girls and a boy. So Daniel being the only boy, there was a challenge if he was going to farm to make that succession happen. And in fact, we found we had to grow a little bit to make that succession work. And we've chosen to do that outside the farm. Hence, Daniel is going to be the only one in the family that will farm this property. This farm, the, the, the focus for us is definitely the sheep. We have a breeding ewe flock of 3,300 ewes. We put the best 2,500 of those ewes to a maternal breed ram. The remaining 800 go to a terminal ram. After the first cycle, everything goes to a terminal ram. We also have about 1,000 hoggets. Um, we lamb probably half of them. Um, and it, and it, well, in the future, we'd like to get that up to be lambing all of them. Currently, we finish probably 80% of our lambs. 
with the increase in our new forages with the clover and the plantain and whatnot, we're looking to finish everything. Our cattle policy here, the last of the breeding cows um, went off the property probably two years ago um, and now we're just, just bulls and a few steers. We probably winter about 250 to 300 bulls, a mixture of R1 and R2 bulls. They're mostly wintered on the intensive cattle system. We'll finish the heavier of the R2 bulls before their second winter just to make sure we're not carrying cattle that are too heavy for our country. With our terrain, you know, we have very few flat paddocks, so the areas that we've put into plantain, you know, it's stuff that you can just get a tractor over, so we, we really have to make use of the good land we have. If we can show where our produce comes from, possibly videos or pictures of the farm and the, the plantings that we've done. As Dad said, we never, we started out never intending for that to be the case. It was, we did it for, for the love of the land, and um, a lot of the dams we planted were because we were mad duck shooters. Um, so. We, we've just we've always been into planting trees, and now the way things are going, it's it's becoming more and more important, and and we'll continue to to do that. This program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.